Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am working from home this morning and I have been waiting for a morning at home to get a bunch of stuff done around my house. There are quite a few little fires that need putting out. I've got food that needs to be taken care of. I went ahead and made a to-do list and decided to film as I work and talk through some things that have been on my heart lately. We've received some hard news about friends. And as we go into Thanksgiving next week, I just wanted to provide some encouragement and some perspective. Let's get going. The first thing I do before I get started with my day is I make up a half gallon of a Trim Healthy Mama drink called Good Girl Moonshine. It's oolong tea, I add two packets of True Lime which is sweetened with stevia, a generous splash of apple cider vinegar, and a dash of ground ginger. I'm terrible about drinking enough water throughout the day, so my goal every day is to drink this entire half gallon of Good Girl Moonshine. It also helps keep hunger away in between meals. We have eight children. They are 5, 7, 11, 11, 13, 14, 17, and 18. We've been a homeschool family for 14 years, but this year a few of our kids have gone to school. My oldest is away at college, my second oldest is taking college classes online, and my 13 and 14 year old are still homeschooled, but our youngest four are in school. We work really hard on our homestead, and we do it as a team. All of our children have daily responsibilities, like making their beds, tidying their rooms, getting their schoolwork and homework done, and then we have a short list of chores that we rotate through weekly. The chores that are rotated through are kitchen and dining room floor, dishes, trash, laundry room and dinner helper, and stairs and upstairs. The job that takes the most amount of time is definitely dishes. I help out with dishes a lot, especially when the child that's on dish duty for the week is one of my younger children who's in school all day. Upstairs, there's a girl's bathroom and a boy's bathroom, so all of the boys and girls take turns cleaning their bathroom really well once a week before they pass the torch to the next sibling. None of these jobs take a lot of time, but it really helps cultivate teamwork and the fact that many hands make light work. I could never get all of these things done on a regular basis with everything else that I've got going on, but when we're all pitching in 10, 15, 20 minutes a day, the house stays tidy, everything gets done, and no one person is working alone. Now that the kitchen's taken care of, I'm gonna take some time to make some banana muffins. I've got about 16 really ripe bananas that have been sitting on the kitchen counter for several days now. I buy anywhere from 20 to 40 bananas every week or two. Sometimes they all get eaten up fresh before they get really ripe, and other times half of them will sit on the counter and I'll end up making a huge batch of banana muffins. I doubled my recipe today, but a single batch would make about three dozen muffins and calls for seven to eight ripe bananas half a cup of melted butter, two cups of sugar, three cups of flour, half a teaspoon of salt, two eggs, and two teaspoons of baking soda. Mix all of those together really well and bake in muffin cups at 350 for about 20 minutes or until they start to brown on top. Last week, there was a house fire in the middle of the night about half a mile from us. The next day, we received devastating news that the fire had claimed the life of an eight-year-old little girl and her mother. My daughters went to school with her. We attended the funeral earlier this week, and it was heartbreaking. We just passed the anniversary of my father-in-law's death, so we are all too familiar with losing a loved one unexpectedly around the holidays. My heart aches for the husband and sons she left behind and the pain that will be ever present as the holidays approach every year moving forward. Then just this morning, I received news that a friend's baby less than six months old is showing signs and symptoms of cancer and is in the process of being evaluated by an oncologist. I can't even begin to imagine the pain, emotions, and feelings of uncertainty. The news that these two precious families received over the past week has rocked them to their core. They aren't thinking about Thanksgiving, what the grocery shelves look like, or what may happen with our economy over the next 6 to 12 months. If we were faced with devastating news like this, none of those things would matter. We would be living moment by moment in survival mode. As I stitched up my daughter's sweater, I thanked God for my healthy children and prayed protection over our family. <sighs> my room and the laundry are finished. All right, gotta keep moving. I went back in the kitchen and finished up these muffins right as my 13 and 14 year old were coming down for coffee and breakfast. 
As I put this last batch of muffins into the oven, I grabbed a bowl of kitchen scraps to take out to the chickens and check for eggs. I love all of their little noises. Now that winter is approaching and our daylight hours are getting shorter and shorter, we're receiving less and less eggs from our chickens on a daily basis. In the summertime, we're receiving 18 to 20 eggs a day, and now we're down to about eight or nine. This is why we preserve our excess eggs in the summertime with a method called water glassing. It helps make up the difference in the winter when we're receiving less. Now for a quick walk through the garden. All that's left in here are winter peas and the peppers from the summer that somehow are still going strong. There's lots of flowers and little baby pea pods that are starting to form, and somehow the bell peppers are still producing, although they've slowed down a lot since the weather's gotten cooler. Now to wash and put away the eggs. Some of the eggs come out of the nesting boxes nice and clean. Others we soak in water for just a few minutes and then wipe them off before putting them in these great little plastic egg holders that I got from the kitchen organization section in Home Goods. Now to tackle the laundry room. The laundry room and mud room is a catch-all Monday through Friday. The kids come in from school, they hang their stuff up or just throw it on the bench, they kick their shoes off, things get thrown in the sink, fingerprints all over the glass, items pile up on the washer and dryer. Normally, one of my favorite things to do on Friday afternoon before I go get my kids from school is to come home from work and really clean and organize the laundry room. There's just something about going into the weekend with a tidy laundry room. We try to get all of our laundry done by Friday night so we don't have to do any on the weekends. Last week was super busy and I'm pretty sure the laundry room got neglected last Friday. So I decided to go ahead and get it done today and I'm pretty sure we'll be able to maintain it really well all the way through next week. I don't know about you, but there are areas in our house that stay messy all the time. And when we finally take the time to really organize and clean it well, we're able to maintain that for a long time. And it always leaves me wondering why we don't make that a priority more often. I finished sweeping, took the trash out, and mopped the floor really well before putting things back where they belong. I love a good before and after. Here was the kitchen. Now it's clean and inviting and ready for supper. The laundry room was in complete disarray. And now it smells fresh and everything is back where it belongs. I almost forgot to show you these last two watermelon. This was a volunteer watermelon plant from one seed that was dropped last year. We're gonna pull them in the next day or so. These beautiful zinnias are the last of the colorful flowers left in our garden. And here's what's left of the banana muffins after my older three got a hold of them. My little kids will probably have one or two for a snack when they get home from school, and we'll put the rest in the freezer for the weekend. I forgot to mention that everything in this video was done between the hours of 8 and 11 a.m. If you've made it here to the end, let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this type of day in the life video and would want to see one more often. Thanks for watching!